Let me ask you a question. What will happen when you try to jump to another platform, you press the jump, but you still fall down and die? Well, let me tell you, you're gonna feel cheated. The game should have jumped. You pressed the jump at the right time and you should have lived. Even though you're not right, you're gonna blame the game. And that's what we are trying to avoid. We need to make our game feel fair for the player, even though it's not fair at all. For example, if the player gets hit or falls or dies and thinks that the game is wrong, that's bad for our games because he's not gonna be enjoying the game as much because he thinks the game is rigged, he is right and he should have lived or he shouldn't get hit or he shouldn't have fallen. So we need to achieve the point where the player thinks that it's his own fault and not fault of the game. So we are gonna be slightly lying to our player. And we are gonna do that by using a concept called Coyote Time. It comes from an old cartoon from Looney Tunes. And if I say meep meep, you probably already know which one it is. It's a Wily Coyote and the Roadrunner. A little TLDR for those who doesn't know what uh, this cartoon is about. You can probably tell from the name that there are two characters. The Wily Coyote who tries to catch the Roadrunner which is a bird that doesn't fly. And usually it ends up with the bird escaping. For us it's important the Coyote time. So let us show you a little example of what we mean by a Coyote time. In the clip we can see that uh, Wiley ran off the cliff and he started falling after a few seconds. And the time between him running off the cliff and the gravity kicking in is called Coyote time. And we can actually implement the Coyote time in our game. So we're gonna have couple frames after he runs off the platform and even though he's not on the ground he's still gonna be able to jump. And that's gonna make our game so much better. It's gonna feel so good when you try to jump and he actually jumps instead of falling down. Okay, so I already have my project. Uh, you probably gonna have something different than me because I am using State Machine. And if you want to see more about that topic, you can click the card up there where I described how I use State Machine for my needs. So I have a method jump, which is executed in each frame. And the jump method is asking if you're pressing the space button and also if you're grounded. We are currently changing to a state that is called jump, but you can pretend that there is a code that is responsible for jumping. You can just have your jumping code here. For our coyote jump, we are gonna need two values. In my case, I am using two float values, coyote timer and coyote frames. And since I am using them in a different script than uh, this script, I have two properties. Again, you can have only the two values if you're using one script. But because I'm using multiple scripts, I have properties. So when the player runs off the platform, there are going to be multiple frames that he's in the air. And the maximum amount of frames that we still want our player to be allowed to jump, that's going to be our coyote frames. So this is our maximum frames that we allowed the player to jump. And the coyote timer is going to be incremented by one every frame that we run the game and we are not on the ground. So. If you're not on the ground, every frame the coyote timer is gonna be plus one, plus one, plus one. Each frame, each frame, each frame. When we touch the ground, which is here, this is the condition. If the player is grounded or is touching a wall, our coyote timer is gonna be reset. It. We are gonna be resetting it to a zero. So every time we are on the ground or touching a wall, the coyote timer is gonna be zero. So this method reset jump count is executed 
each normal update. And if we are not on the ground and not touching a wall, the Coyote timer is going to be increased by one every frame. So if I try to print Coyote timer every frame, it's going to look like this. When we are grounded, it's going to print one because uh, we can iterate only plus one. But if I run off the platform, it's going to start counting more and more. When we jump and start falling, the Coyote timer is always going to increase by one, by one, by one, until we touch the ground again. So now we have our Coyote frame sorted and we can use that for our jumping. If I scroll here to our jump method, which is executed each frame and asking if we are pressing space and if we are grounded, we can add a condition after that. So now we are asking if the player is grounded or if the current Coyote timer is less than the Coyote frames. And if so, we are going to be allowing the player to jump. Again, this is currently just changing the state to a jump state, but you can have your own code with the jump functionality there. Now we just have to set our maximum frames that we want the player to be allowed to jump. I'm gonna set it to, let's say, 20. And now when I try to jump at the end of the platform, I should be able to do so. Again, the amount of frames of the Coyote frames is totally up to you. I will put uh, fewer I will put fewer frames for my game because I want it to be more realistic. But you can use more or less. It's totally up to you. For example, dead cells are using quite a lot of uh, time that the player can still jump, and even other methods that uh, will make the player move through the environment much smoother. That's gonna be it from me. I hope you enjoyed the video, you learned something or not, you can let me down in the comments below. I would be super glad if you could press the like or dislike so I can see if you if the video was useful for you or not. And if you don't want to miss any videos from me in the future, you can press the subscribe slash bell button. And I'm gonna see you next time. Bye!